The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 154 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers here, as always, with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. How you doing? I'm good. Are you hungry? I'm, you know what? I actually am a little hungry. I'm feeling a little snacky. We are going to talk about snacks, and that's a bit difficult if you're starving. Yeah, so, that's all right. I'll just I'll end the show break. with a healthy hunger. <laughs> <laughs> so this is part of our new kind of feeding a family series, a very loose series, if you will. But we talked recently about how we feed our families breakfast and lunch. And then today we're going to talk about snacks and sweets, which if you asked my kids what they like to eat, that would pretty much that's their two favorite categories. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. That's what all kids want at all times. Snacks and sweets. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through how we handle these things. We're, you guys know us. We're pretty low key about how we feed our families. This is not going to be like 25 healthy snacks to guarantee your kids to get their veggies type of podcast. <laughs> yeah. no, but no, I, we heard from a lot of people after doing the breakfast and lunch one that it was just reassuring to hear that, you know, normal moms serve cereal and pack sandwiches yep. and the kids will be okay. Yeah, they will be all right. Um, I also want to mention that I have my daughter Allegra on with me at the end of the show. It's her 10th birthday this weekend, and she and I chat a little bit about snacks in our house, but also the fact that it's her birthday. And so stay on to the end. It's fun for us when we get to bring our kids on. It is. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost Meal Plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all prep dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. 
Okay, we're going to talk about snacks. In the you know what else happens show. in summer? Snacking. Snacks. Snacking yes. out of control. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't usually do this, but I did a little bit of, I don't know, research or like read a couple <laughs> articles. Know. Yeah. I don't know. Research, you know, the experts. That thing I've heard of. We think we're experts. Right. Um, but I do think, and I don't know what you think about this, there's definitely a contingent of experts out there who are saying that snacking, kids snacking is a very, like, American thing that we have built up. There's snacks built into yeah. school. There's snacks after sports practice. Um, and that in other countries, little kids, like, you know, three and under, eat several times a day. But older kids do not snack. And, and American kids typically have four snacks a day. So I don't know. That's yeah. just, I'm just starting with the big picture. I'm curious if you have any thoughts on that. I have oh, mixed gosh. feelings. I have mixed feelings as well. Okay. So here's what I will say. Um, I do think that we're a little overly obsessed with the idea that the kids have to have access to food at all times. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it is built into the cultural thing. Um, and for older, that's where it gets weird for me when they're older and they don't like, they can't be expected to go three hours without having something right. to eat. Right. Um, I've seen moms of kids I thought were kind of on the older side who are still carrying snacks in their purse because at any yeah. point, you know, <laughs> their third grader might yeah. want to eat something. Yeah. And you know, if you're dealing with like low blood sugar issues or something like that, that's one thing. But I had a teacher, um, one of actually Clara's very favorite teachers and I'm, I'm going to gently rib her because she was amazing. Her name's, uh, Miss Bora, uh -huh. but my friends and I called her two snack Bora because she <laughs> wanted the kids to have two snacks. And there were days where I'd be like, I just can't, I can't with the two snacks. I just, and I don't even know. She taught first and second. Yeah. Um, so but again, her, when I did bring it up to her one time and she said, you know, I know it's maybe it seems a little over the top, but like kids expect it. And then when they get, they get, they drag, they yeah. drag at 10 AM and then they drag again at, at yeah. you know, one or one 30 in the afternoon. So I, I can't blame her for wanting us to supply it. It was just kind of like, Oh my goodness, more snacks. So I do think for myself, I was the mom who we talked about this. Didn't even like in our last, um, more than mom, I didn't even carry a diaper bag. So I didn't have snacks on hand all the time. Yeah. And I would sometimes throw like a banana in my purse yeah. or a bag of Cheerios or something. Yeah. But for the most part, I, I do feel like we kind of overblow it. I Okay. So I'm going to agree with that too. And I'll just tell you real briefly what kind of the expert argument is, is that kids are eating less at mealtime because mm -hmm. we are providing constant snack. And the nutritional value of the snack is never the same as what they would have eaten at meals. Does that make right. sense? Especially so, if it's an on the go snack. Like exactly. those are generally convenience foods, right? Exa so, exactly. Yeah. So it's not like it's just taking three square meals and divvying them up into six, which, you know, according to some nutrition people, like that could be a good thing, but that's not what we're doing with kids because we're giving them filler snacks for the snacks. And then they're eating less of what in theory would be more nutritious at mealtime. And so well, I can, yeah. I can see that for sure. And I definitely and you, can see how this is like a sort of an American thing. You do build those habits and tendencies around it too. Like if you got used to having a snack every hour, right. then you would start to depend on that snack and you would come to expect it. And right. your hunger, your hunger levels will like adjust to that. Have yeah. you ever noticed if you start skipping breakfast, say, yep. or eating less, like pushing meal t um, dinner time back or something yeah. for the first couple of days, you're a little uncomfortable, but then pretty soon you adjust. And Absolutely. I think we don't ever want our kids to be uncomfortable at all ever. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and that's we a don't... very American thing too. Yeah. And you know, I think part of it is well-meaning parents who go through the horrible experience of having an over hungry two year old, yes. three year old yep. is like, then we're operating out of sort of PTSD from those yep. years. And we, you know, maybe nobody tells us that five and six and seven year olds are fully capable of, you know, going yeah. three or four hours without food. But here, I'm going to then just final thought on this. The other side, the part that I can't get totally behind that is that I personally like to eat several times a day. And I really like, I like teaching my kids to kind of listen to their body and eat when they're hungry. And I right. feel like sometimes that involves snacking and I'm just never going to be the mom who serves three square meals, you know, packs a full lunch right. and then limit snacks because I, I have three kids and I, if they're hungry, I believe them. Now we're going to get right. into like how we make sure that not all those snacks are garbage food and how to kind of encourage them to make good nutrition choices. But I don't know. I feel like I myself am a snacker. I enjoy snacking and I'm probably, I'm probably not going to change that. So that's kind of the other side. Yeah, I get you. And I think what, what, when you say that, what stood out, like stood out at me and struck me was their hunger signals, not the hunger signals we think they should yeah, have and, and not therefore like the impose schedule. on them. Yes. Right. And some of that can't be avoided. I mean, when it's snack time, it's snack time. When the game is over, they hand out the little baggies of Cheez-Its <laughs> and the high seed juice drinks. And yeah. luckily that doesn't happen every single day, Right. you know, all year round. So you can kind of work around it. But I do think 
think, I don't know, it, it kind of reminds me of when I, I had to train myself as a parent out of doing things like we'd be in the car for 15 minutes and one of my kids would say they were thirsty. And then I'd start stressing out about like going to a gas station and getting a bottle of water for them. And then I thought, okay, we're going to be in the car at tops like an hour, probably more like 15 to 20 minutes. Like they can wait, they can learn to control that or next time grab something from home. So, you know, they have to learn, but we sometimes have to train ourselves to help them learn. Yes. Yes. And ultimately that probably leads to them making better food and drink choices yeah. anyway, because they, they have started to listen to their body. So this yeah. is, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting, it is interesting question. Okay. So now I kind of have some, maybe just a little more practical, tactical questions. Um, I thought we could answer. So my first one you just kind of alluded to is, do you allow snacks in the car at this stage in your, um, or in the last few years, say like, as your kids have gone past the preschool stage? Yeah, no, not really. I I would say like, I will, if it's a, no, I just got a new car like a year and a half ago. And that was when I started to really draw the line. Actually, no, I take that back. The the time I really drew the line was when I had to get my, I want to say it was even back when I had a minivan. I had to get it detailed because it was so disgusting. Yeah. And after that, I said, I will never let my car get that gross again. I was one, it was one of those, so help me God yeah. moments. I'm like yeah. raising my hands to the sky. Yeah. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I will never clean Cheerio crumbs yeah. from under the seat again. This is the last time. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it wasn't just that it was so bad. And because it's a slippery slope, you allow one snack yeah. and then next thing you know, there's just wrappers everywhere and crumbs everywhere. So no, for the most part, I don't, um, there's always an exception, right? Like yeah. there's been times we've been on longer road trips and I've let the kids eat in the car and I just make sure when we get there, they clean up and stuff. Um, but I don't like it to be a habit. I don't yeah. like to, this feeling of we have to eat every time we're like, we have to have access to food and drink at all times. It's weird to me. So yeah. no. I totally allow snacks in the car, but I, I <laughs> but you have littler kids. I do have littler kids. I feel like I, we're not in the car. We are in the car a lot, but it's all short. It's all short times. Um, I feel like it's more laziness on my part. Like we get ready to leave somewhere and then someone tells me they're hungry. So I'm like, grab something on the way just, I, It hasn't been a hill I have wanted to die on. Well, and also I know that you're not in the, your, your drives aren't long, but right. mine are really short, like right. for the most part. And when I'm, it also feels like you're picking your kids up at like really food sensitive times of day. Yeah. That's like true. they've just put in a long afternoon yeah. at preschool or something. And maybe you're going to be in the car for 15 or 20 minutes. That's very different from my like literal three minute drive. Right. So I can see it, you know, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about different areas of the house? Like if Ooh, kids are snacking yeah. at home, do, is there rules about where they can snack? Cause this one, I am a little more strict. There are rules. Unfortunately, somebody is breaking them and I don't know who it is. So you're not allowed to eat in the living room unless it is a family like movie night, popcorn all together right. situation. Yeah, like it, everyone is doing this and, and you know it. Absolutely not allowed to take snacks into your room unless it's like a sleepover and then the rule is everyone's going to clean up the next day. Okay. And those rules are being I've found evidence when we moved <laughs> that those rules have not been um, honored and yeah. I'm very grumpy about it because right. there were granola bar wrappers Ooh. everywhere. Kind of like somewhat hidden, like hidden enough that I wouldn't have noticed them just on an average day. But like then when we started moving furniture, they just all rolled out. (laughs) They appeared. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, having a rule is one thing, but having kids adhere to the rules, another thing. And I haven't obviously I'm falling down on the job there. So, yeah, my kids are. Well, they're not quite as independent as yours. I mean, Allegra is Reed is medium independent. Violet would like to be independent. So I'm still I'm still mostly involved when they're getting their snack, even if I'm not physically doing it for them. So I, I think I'm able to exert probably a little more control. Yeah, but I they are so bad about just wandering around. And you've been in my house. So, it, you know, kitchen and then we have an eat in kitchen and then that kind of spills over into the family room. But I I mean, I do not let them take snacks out of the kitchen but they just sort of like they'll be sitting at the kitchen counter and then they'll just get up and kind of wander around I'm like sit down you're either eating or you're going to go do something else so that's kind of a pet peeve of mine like I feel like that and that's where I get into mindless snacking like I do feel like sometimes they say they want to snack because what they really want to do is you know hang out at the kitchen counter and we're all talking so that's when I'm like okay guys if you if you want to snack it means you're hungry so then sit here and eat your snack and then go do something else it's not like we just have this and and I'm pretty I'm pretty firm about like we don't just open a bag of pretzels and leave it out on the counter and eat out of it I I am trying to teach them like put it in a portion that makes sense in a bowl and then sit at the counter of the table and eat it but 
I don't know. They just still feels like they just wander off. So they don't wander very far because I'm I'm usually there. So I don't find stuff in bedrooms, but that definitely. But is they not. do still kind of wander. Yeah, yeah, it's like they just forget that they're they forget what they're doing, and then they're yes. just wandering around with this little bowl of peanut butter pretzels. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Sit down. Doing? How hard yeah. is it to sit for? Right. Well, you know, to that point, I have to say one thing that I, again going back to like the American way of eating, which yeah. I think we can all agree is disordered for the most part. <laughs> Americans have a very poor reputation for the way we relate to food. It's just a fact. And one of the things like I personally find disturbing about the way Americans eat. And so when I see my kids doing it, I have this weird, like visceral reaction. Yeah. I can relate to that too. It's like walking around with food or like walking around with a soda bottle or, and I've seen like little kids walking around with like a 20 ounce soda bottle. And I'm like, that's what you, you just drink that at a party or something, but then you get up and play. You don't walk around, you don't play with your soda in your hand. And I just think that that's that idea that we have to have access to something at all times. I mean, think about when we were growing up, there wasn't like coffee. People didn't take their coffee with them when they went places. And and I don't have like a judgment about that. It's just, I I do it. I take my tea places with me, but it's like, we have this nervousness about being away from our substance or our drink or food where like whatever it is, we just have this like nervousness about it. And when I see kids and that's like a huge trigger and I have to kind of back myself away sometimes and be like, stop freaking out because there's an open bag of chips and kids are dip, like digging right. their hands in it. Is it, right. am I upset about that because it's gross to me that it's kind of gross. Yeah. Am I upset about it because I don't want them to polish off a bag of chips in one sitting? Yes. That's also something I don't like. Yeah. Like I have to almost parse out yeah. what bothers me so much about certain food habits yeah. um, before I can like decide why. So one thing I do is I have a lot of little bowls. Yep, me too. And I give snacks and a lot, like, and I will stop the kids and be like, okay, if you want that, that's fine, but we're going to pour it into a bowl yep. and you're going to sit and eat it at the counter or at yep. the table. Um, yep. And then as they get older, you do start to lose a little control. But I feel, I hope that just me, you know, consistently returning to that, that that's the way we eat and when that's they were like, little, will stick with them to some degree. I, I hope so too. And I, that's one where modeling is really so important and also so hard. Cause I yeah. sometimes sit there, we tease my mom, I'm calling her out on the podcast, but that she sometimes stands in the pantry and eats crackers out of a box. <laughs> and I tease her that like when she's 105, that's where we're going to find her. And, yeah. and I kind of do that too. Sometimes if it's just a little bit of mindless, I don't have a huge, like mindless eating problem, but if it, if I do, it's me just standing there eating a few almonds out of a jar in the pantry. But so I, I could be better about modeling that, but I'm exactly the same way when it comes to my kids. So, um, yeah, same, same. Yeah. So I was going to see, remembering back to like the toddler days and it's okay if you don't, if nothing comes to mind for you, cause it's been longer, but did, um, any go-to snacks or like, I remember a lot of like special occasion snacks for my kids. So, mm, um, okay. for us, I can go first if you want, but for us, those would have been any kind of fruit snacks were like, like amazing. Special, cause I yeah. didn't, I didn't buy fruit snacks as a regular snack. I didn't, I wasn't opposed to them. I found them kind of expensive. The ones I would have bought that were slightly healthier, like the Annie's fruit bunnies were so expensive. Right. Um, and the garbage ones were kind of garbagey. So to my kids, I mean, they're candy. Yeah. The garbage ones are candy. Yeah. Exactly. So to my kids, those would have been like, if I needed a bribe, if we, you know, had to go get shots at the pediatrician, (laughs) like anything where it was like an incentive snack. So that was a go-to. Um, I did a lot of sticking a banana in my purse. Actually, when you mentioned that, I was like, oh yeah, I did that all the time. It's like an insurance policy, like especially, and you can have a six month old baby can snack on a banana. So it sort of serves everybody. Um, and you know, I remember having those little snack traps, the little plastic things where the kid can reach their fingers in and pull out. And I would do Cheerios in there for really little kids or we never got, Oh, like the, like they have the, like the rubbery top. Yes. Uh huh. So it doesn't spill. And those were great. It's a great little contraption. Some, I'm sure some mom invented those. Um, and I'm sure there's just even better versions now. So I do remember having some small portable snacks. Oh, you know, another one that was good was any kind of like a cereal bar, like everything Mm -hmm. from the Nutrigrain type bars to, you know, some are even made by baby food companies where it's sort of like some kind of whole grain, soft squishiness around something fruity in the middle. I found though, I just have to say that I stopped buying those for toddlers because I felt like they were consistently the messiest thing. Yeah, that's true. Ever. They, and they true. messed everything up. They messed up high chair trays. They messed up yeah. interiors of cars. They, the kids like would come out looking like they had just put their face in a jelly jar. Okay. So right. <laughs> I'm not saying like I, I didn't be do it because I no. totally did, but any kind of bar or like even granola bars, they would start to dissolve in their yeah. sweaty, sticky little hands. <laughs> and then there would just be like, 
Like anything that had any wetness to it yeah. or gumminess, I felt like was just kind of a snack disaster, which isn't yeah. to say I didn't indulge in it sometimes with the kids, but I would always be like, why did I do that? Right. Now right. it's just granola, like sticky granola or oats crumbs everywhere and like yeah. smeary faces. So for me, I did a lot of plain Cheerios, yep. even, even honey nut Cheerios became yep. a problem because they would get sticky. Mm-hmm. I guess I have a thing about kids and sticky hands. I don't know. Like it's amazing that you had five children. <laughs> don't touch me. Don't touch that, me. <laughs> that to sticky hands. Well, here's what I'm saying. Like I, d- I dealt with it, but now looking back, I'm cringing thinking yes. about it. Um, I did a lot of cheese cubes. Oh, that's and amazing. I remember yeah. when my budget allowed, I loved like I loved the um, indulgence of just buying them pre-cubed. Yeah, like it's not that hard to cube your own cheese. But I did a lot of like cheese and a fruit. Uh huh. Or like you know, so, so like um, a sliced up apple yep. and cheese or something like that. So a lot of that, like just plain crackers. I yeah. I kept it really really simple. Yep. No, toddlers. I think I th- I think we were the same, and I don't. I wasn't ever on the go so much. Um, a couple other ones that. Um, I think make really good once you're beyond choking hazard is grapes is one of my favorite fruits Mm, to have out in like if you have to take a snack on the go because for some reason they they don't like my kids don't complain about them like getting slimy or getting brown or everything else that happens to fruit after like a hot second so grapes I feel like retain their same texture and flavor even if they've been in your purse for a few hours Um, and then of course they're chokeable so there's that and popcorn same thing popcorn is also chokeable but it's also easy to have like in a Ziploc bag relatively healthy and like kids feel like oh it's a snack but it's not I don't know I guess it's messy too there's not a lot of snacks that aren't Uh, that's very true Um, do you remember the the puffs were another thing that we oh, liked a yes. lot like any kind of little you know grain yep. puff or like a fruity grain puff sometimes yep. um different companies had them and um another thing i would just carry an apple sometimes but do you uh-huh. remember when you had to start the apple yeah yeah isn't that like a funny memory that i've completely is. forgotten and, about and, and i there's a certain age of baby that once you kind of start it that will keep them busy it's like part snack and part toy and some and of them will like go them, all the way through yes, it like it, a like a it, squirrel yes and it will keep <laughs> yes. them busy for like you know they have to have some teeth so like you know right. like a late infant or like early one-year-old and just hand them an apple supervised of course but they usually can't bite off pieces big enough to choke on usually because their mouths well, are it's so more little. like they're just going nyah, nyah, yeah yeah i mean like gnawing on it yeah. and i just remember like i remember even a two-year-old or a three-year-old bringing me an apple and asking me to like oh, yeah. get it, st- like asking me to bite it for them because they just didn't have the jaw strength. Yes. or like they didn't have a good enough teeth or whatever. And then to pretty soon their in. teeth get wiggly and they still can't do it. Yeah. So it's yes, like, you, you gotta be like mm. eight to properly eat an apple. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's so cute. That's a cute memory. Um, okay, well, just a couple more quick questions on snacking. Do you? I'm very curious how this works in your house because you have giant growing man boys, as I yes. as I wrote in our outline, and you've had some that have fully converted into to men um full-on so, men so like how involved are you if a kid is just housing the pantry snacks and it's going to be dinner time and i'm talking about your older kids now like I, it's yeah. one thing to tell a six-year-old that they can't have a snack because it's an hour till dinner but like how hands-on are you about that um i'm not very hands-on um because i'm worried about their appetites uh-huh because my giant growing man boys do have them do yeah. have appetites um, Owen is a little bit different. He's 12, but he's skinny as a rail and he often isn't hungry at dinner and he loves to snack. So that's a little, I keep an eye on him. It's more about, it's more, it's so funny how it's not really about their appetites at dinner. It's more about having respect for me and the meal that I'm putting together. Yes, I feel And so way. please like, you know, save some room so that I put this effort in for a reason. But the other thing is it's expensive. Like if they fill up on snacks, it's so expensive. Yeah. So, um, my rules aren't really centered around when they eat, but okay. more like like if there's if there are certain snacks that are definitely reserved for lunch boxes, you're not allowed to come and just plow through those. Um, okay. it, maybe I'll have a, if I have a box of crackers, you can go into that box of crackers and portion some out. That's different than if I have already pre-portioned. Right. Crackers, just right. as an example. Yes. Yeah. Um, fruit is always fine. No one ever yep. has to. It is, it is actually, it's kind of funny because Owen will always ask me if he can have an apple. I'm like, dude, you don't have to ask me. Right. You can just eat the apple. I don't, yep. fruit is always okay. Veg would always be okay. Um, and, I, and I don't buy a lot of packaged snack foods just to eat. I always have a specific purpose for them. Yeah. So that's kind of where it starts to get tricky because it's more about like not 
throwing off my plan yeah. than it is don't their nutrient. My purchasing yeah, don't mess with decisions. my purchasing. Well, right. Cause like <laughs> if all the crackers are gone, then what am I going to do in the morning when I'm trying to get everyone out the door for, and yeah. they don't have anything to put in their lunches. I mean, there's, yeah. so there's other things like I might make a big giant bowl of popcorn and that's just free. Like yeah. everybody can have popcorn whenever they want. Um, I might have a big thing of almonds or something and the kids can have that whenever they want. So I don't know. It's really more about cost and like, and, and like planning for me yeah. than it is about what they like eat. waiting an hour before. Yeah. Right. What exactly. about, um, I, a little bit have, so I would say we're similar. I don't generally, I don't have like a rule. Like you can't eat anything. Sometimes like four 30 is when some of my kids really do need a snack, especially if they didn't really eat much after school. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just not going to say no to that kid, but like you, I'm going to sort of steer them either toward fruits or veggies only. If, it, if dinner is really soon, then I'll just say fruits or veggies only. Um, or if dinner is something I know that kid is going to hate, I might sort of try to fill them up a little bit, try and fill them up so that when yeah. they sit down to dinner and they're not hungry, I can still say, well, this is what's being offered. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm like gaming my own system. Um, so we're kind of the same, but after dinner, a couple of times has been a problem. I feel my kids go to bed really early, so I don't feel like they should need a snack before bed because they yeah, eat no. at six and they go to bed by eight. Um, but it has a couple of times, a couple of different kids have been like, I'm so hungry at like right before bed. And so for that, it's always a banana is the only option and they yeah. will, they will eat a banana and kind of prove that they were hungry. So that I, I feel like yeah. I'm a little more strict about that than dinner. Well, I and mean, it's hard dinner. because if you don't have a super, super regimented um, dinner time, which we don't, we could eat anywhere between six and sometimes as late as eight, depending on if it's summer or, yeah. or like if it's school year or not, what night of the week, if there's something else going on, what I'm making, how well I did at planning ahead, like all those right. things factor in. And so I feel like I can't be too strict about it. Um, on the other hand, I also I have a lot of triggers around food, I guess, but <laughs> one of my food triggers is kids milling around the kitchen after I've already cleaned it up. Oh yeah. And like, sticking their head in the fridge and taking yeah. stuff out. And I will have, I will have a mom meltdown about that stuff. So it's more like the kitchen's closed, but now I'll just try to make a point of saying, Hey guys, the kitchen's closing. So if you want anything, come get it now right. because in 10 minutes, the last dish is going in the dishwasher and the counter's wiped and we're done in here. Right. And so, you know, but then again, I have teenage, like up until a few months ago, I had a 20 year old man living in my house yeah. and he would get up at two in the morning and eat. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I can't control it too much. Right. I just try not to, I just, I don't know. I, well, I try what I think to is, I think it's fun to hear. Sorry. I That's okay. I was just going to say, I try to keep the triggers out of my face as much as possible. <laughs> That's yeah. All. Well, that makes sense. No, but what I feel like you are showing us in a really good way is like, you definitely have standards and values around how snacking fits into meal times, And you're just, you're not being overly structured about how you apply the rules, but your kids are definitely like when they grow up, they are going to have this same conversation and remember very clearly what the stacking standards and rules oh, were. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's, it's good. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, <laughs> right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com When you log into your account, that's a one-time use only bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. 
They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Let's do it. All right. Let's talk about dessert. Okay. Okay. So I have a first fun question. So if I came over to your house right now, well, you just moved. So you probably have nothing for me, but I know you move stuff from your pantry. So if I just came over with a really big sugar, I just needed sugar. What would I find in your house? I think you'd be out of luck. And I think, <laughs> honestly, I think you would have been out of luck at the old house too. Oh, you know what? I actually, after I moved in, I did buy a bag of like dark chocolate squares. And I think uh-huh. maybe there's one or two left. I didn't eat them cause they have espresso in it. And that just seems like a really bad idea. Yeah. Um, you'd find a bag of sugar and some chocolate chips. I don't okay. keep sweets on hand. I'm not, I don't really like sweets that much. You could eat jelly. You could eat jelly. You could maybe eat a make spoonful hot chocolate. of jelly. Yeah. Actually I always have hot chocolate. Yeah. So if you really needed it, I could make you some hot chocolate, yeah. but I just, I'm not somebody who often has like a, I don't have a candy drawer. Just not yeah. my, you might find like a Snickers hidden someplace that fell out of someone's Halloween bag. Yeah. You'd probably go to the kids. They'd help you out. They, yeah. They would have their stashes. So what if it, what if it was me? What would so I find So if you came house? to me, so I usually have, I usually have baking sweets. So I always have chocolate chips. I usually have marshmallows. Um, if you just wanted like a little mini marshmallow, um, Right now, I know there's some jelly beans left over from Easter. So my kids are a little, they are hoarders when it comes to if they scored some sweets at some point, either a goodie bag or, you know, their Easter basket, they have a very hard time parting with that, even though I'm pretty strict about when they can eat it. So what I end up with is these little bags in my pantry that I know are spoken for. It's like, you know, (laughs) I took them to the movies and I let them get. Sour Patch Kids, but I didn't let them eat the whole thing because those boxes are humongous. It's they like four humongous. servings. Yeah. So I made them have a more sensible serving, but they, they don't want to throw away the rest. They just keep it in the pantry and hope I'll say yes. So that is what you'd find. You'd find this like... But I wouldn't be able to eat it because it belongs to your kids. Oh yeah, totally. It belongs to my so. kids. And eventually they'll forget <laughs> yeah. about it and I'll throw it away. So we're the same then. Kind of. So well, you I don't have, have, like, I have some Girl Scout or... cookies right now. Yeah. I have some Girl Scout cookies that we bought from a friend. I don't... They're not one that I'm super tempted. I think I have more of a sweet tooth than you do, but I'm not a major sweets person. And every now and then I'll be like at the grocery store and I'll think, you know what I really want right now is I want to just bring home a box of chips deluxe and I want to, I want everyone to eat eat like a sleeve tonight. (laughs) So it happens, but it's pretty rare. Um, but also things like donuts I'll buy every now and then. Okay. So I do buy them every now and then. It's just that I usually treat that as a, like, we're going to devour it all in one sure. serving. And, and so sitting it's not, then, it's not yeah. sitting. I, I actually like that better than my weird bags of jelly beans and stuff in the pantry. <laughs> um, I used to keep ice cream in my freezer for me personally. I used to really like a little bit of ice cream in the evenings and I don't do that anymore, which is probably better for me. Um, but I, do I don't love. like ice cream very much. Does that make me weird? Um, I'm it's to me, it's like, Every now and then I really, again, like I'll think, oh, you know, what would be great right now is like a bite of really good creamy ice cream with like a chunk of chocolate or something in it. Like a, you know what I mean? Like a brownie. I'm kind of snobby about ice cream. I'm not going to just eat ice cream to eat ice cream, but I do love really good ice cream. But I just, it's not one of those things that it's not a go-to for me at all. Yeah. Yeah. And And my kids have complained about that before. They're like, how can we never have ice cream in the freezer? Like other families. That's funny. It makes me feel really bad. We don't either. Um, (laughs) 
So one thing when I was thinking about how sweets worked when my kids were little, and that is like that's like a whole two part episode in and of itself. So we're not going to probably get to all that. But I I always remember thinking it was so funny that your kids would be having this like kind of garbage kids meal somewhere like, you know, chicken nuggets or pizza or something. (laughs) And there'd be some kind of lollipop or ice cream bar or something after. And you're like, come on, finish your pizza so you can have your popsicle. And then I just would find myself being like, wait, all of this food is trash. And right. It's all equally trash. We might as well just enjoy that this is it's either a birthday party or we're on vacation or whatever. Just so I've really tried actually over time not to tie eating dessert to finishing some other meal. And I think I think that's kind of a better approach. My kids do not. There's no dessert expected any time right. in our house yeah. it's not like if and I have friends who do it differently like dessert a little treat like a little mini chocolate or something is kind of part of the routine in the evening and and finishing your dinner or eating a good dinner is a ticket to that I don't have any judgment about that I think that's totally fine um I notice that when my kids have been on vacation where they've been having sugar daily they get right back into that what's our treat tonight what's our treat right. today do we have what do we have I'm like we have nothing you don't just get dessert because you made it to seven o'clock at night right. like it's not it's not it's a not fundamental your human right, right. no right. Exactly. So that's kind of how it works in my house now. Um, yeah. Oh, well, but- I agree. Like if, if, if we were having dessert every single day as part of the meal, I think I might just be a little stricter about it. Like, Hey, let's at least make an effort to eat the first <laughs> round or whatever before yeah. we get to the sweet. But because we don't, it's, it's a treat when we have dessert. Yeah. And also I, I don't care. Like, especially because it does seem to it does seem to usually coincide with some kind of a a junky meal in our right house. The difference might be if I made something really special, I, like a pie or something. I mean, like I yeah. rarely would do that anyway. But if I made something really special, um, maybe that would be something that I would kind of want them to eat before they would get. But typically, like a dessert in my house might be something like um, berries and like homemade whipped cream, which I don't care. Oh, they could eat that at the beginning if yes. they wanted to. Yeah. Or it's something we make together after dinner, which also makes it easier. You can all make cookies after you finish dinner and then it doesn't feel like you're being punished. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And I'm glad you brought up that they could eat that before because I gave up on this whole, like you have to wait till a certain time or after a certain meal to eat dessert. And, and so I routinely, if there's something in the house that they want and Girl Scout cookies is a good example. Like we bought some from a friend. So then they were in the house. So then they wanted to know when they could eat them. And I just kind of wanted to get it over with. So they were the little ones. So I was like, okay, you can have three a day and you can have them whenever you want. And Violet would come downstairs at six 15 in the morning and eat three Girl Scout cookies. (laughs) And then I was yeah. done talking about it for the rest right. of the day. Yep. So I, I'm all about, you know, whatever, whatever works, but I think it's so ingrained again, culturally, like you finish your plate, then you get your dessert and it just hasn't played out that way for us, but no, neither. Yeah. Um, do you have memories of eating sweets when you were growing up? Like w- rules about like how your mom was about it or mm. did you have more of a sweet tooth when you were? I, well, yeah, I definitely, I mean, when I was a kid, I had a big sweet tooth. Um, it, and actually I had a sweet tooth well into my twenties and it just kind of in the last decade kind of went away. I think I just started, I think I just started getting a taste for like salty, fatty things yeah. and bitter things that like, you know, tea and wine and stuff that I didn't have obviously when yeah. I was a kid. So just like one set of taste buds swapped yeah. out for the other. Um, my mom did not routinely make dessert. Um, we, sometimes she would have a I remember it like being a big deal if she had a carton of ice cream in the freezer and we would get to indulge. I felt like a big indulgence. Um, I was allowed at a pretty young age to get around on my bike. So if mm-hmm. I could scrape up 25 cents, I could go get a little Debbie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I liked the, um, the, the fudge rounds okay. quite a bit and Swiss rolls quite a bit. Okay. And so I would, you know, probably once a day go to the, like just hop on my bike and go to the corner store and get myself probably starting at the age of like nine. Yeah. So yeah that's when I started Clara stopping at the store that. on the way home. Yeah. 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 Um, and age. then, you know, get myself a little treat. I don't remember like, I, and I remember like there would be those times of year when I would have access to like lots of sweets, like right after Easter, right after Halloween. Yeah. And I would just, I remember sitting in my bed slowly. It's so funny. <laughs> I had a big, huge hollow bunny Uh huh. and I filled it with water and would drink oh. water out of it and then eat it. <laughs> That is and like weird, read, but I can see how it would work, but it was awesome. It was really convenient. Uh, like at the bottom part of its body was filled with, it was covered with foil. So it didn't get, you know, right. gross or anything. And I'm just like, like sipping as my water, the water and was then... cold enough that like, I, f- I would feel like if the water started to get at all, like 
<laughs> lukewarm. It everything. would start to melt it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. All I know is I did this for a long time. I would sit in bed and read for like a week and a half after Easter. And every day I would just eat a little more and a little more and a little more. That was kind of like, you know, you just binge on the sweets yeah. or sitting and playing solitaire in my room and eating all my Halloween candy for yep. like a week and a half. That was like my hobby yeah. was eating candy. So yes, I loved candy when I was a kid. And I don't remember my mom having a big... I don't know. She really didn't insert herself into it too much. It was she wasn't going to provide it. Yeah, I think. But she also wasn't too up in my face about it. I think that's exactly how it was for us. So I remember walking home and stopping at there were two different little places we could stop on the walk home from school. Um, but getting a plain Hershey bar, not Hershey with almonds, just a plain. And yeah. I loved that. And that was yeah, third grade on. I remember. I remember when I was al- allowed to stay home alone. So, you know, 10 or so up, I would get chocolate chips from the pantry because we didn't have yep. candy in the house. We did have ice cream. I do remember having ice cream, but I don't think I, I there might have been rules about that because I remember having ice cream in the evening after dinner. I don't remember rating the ice cream like after school. Right. So there might have been some rules there, but I definitely remember buying a lot of candy. Like as a, as an early teenager, teenager, there was a little candy store in my high school, like the, some kind of fundraiser, like candy table. You could just stop by any time and eating sour straws and M&Ms mm-hmm. and I mean, I survived, but I ate a lot of candy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely ate a lot of candy right up to and through high school. Like so much, so many. Yeah. Sweets. So many. Yeah. Sweets. Me too. That's and the more funny. the more freedom you have, the more access you have. And I mean, there's only so much we can do about that. Right. It just parents, is. Yeah. It's know? kind of actually yeah. it's a little reassuring, I think, to think like now you and I are we have very diverse palates. We eat yeah. healthy like. Yeah, but I definitely remember eating a lot of candy. Um, do you have any memories of, this is totally switching gears, but of when your babies were little and like if you tried to avoid sugar for a long time or like their first taste of sugar? I feel like I have a couple funny memories. I feel like the first oh. kid is always the one where you say like they're not going to have sugar till they're two or whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't think I was even, I don't think, I, I think because I was the youngest and was raising Jacob in the throes of my sister raising her third, right? Yeah. So Cecily you is a, a year older than back. Jacob and that yeah. was her third kid. I just kind of was like, oh, this is how it works. Yeah. I don't remember ever laboring in, under any delusion that he wasn't going to have, he was going to have a sugar-free birthday cake. I knew right. I wasn't going to make that. Like it just, it kind of was what it was right from the beginning. Um, do you remember, I, okay, I have to yeah. interrupt though. Do you remember the recipe for the sugar-free birthday cake in yes. what to expect when you're yes. expecting? It's probably yes. still in there. Like applesauce. I think it was called the best odds cake or something. Oh no, no, no. No, that the what to expect when you're expecting had the best odds diet. And I always oh, felt like that was such a terrible name, a terrible like name. the best odds of not totally not messing your baby up or up possibly forever. dying. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was that freaked me out uh, anyway. But yes, they had like that recipe. It might have been the toddler. What to expect the toddler years. OK, well, I just the remember first year first or birthday. it was a first birthday recommendation it had like. A kind of a cream cheese frosting, but it was all applesauce for the sugar. And yep. anyway, I totally cut you off, but I was just, no, it's that. fine. I, yes. I remember that. And I did not make it. <laughs> and there were a lot of those going around. I mean, they still have, there's tons yeah. of it, like go on Pinterest and look for a sugar-free birthday cake. And I'm not judging anyone who does it. I just did not. And yeah. I did. It I knew I first. wasn't going to, I, I definitely did it for my first and then quickly abandoned that. Um, for the second and third. Yeah. Um, I do remember when Allegra had her first lollipop because it, she had to get, it was during the H1N1 flu scare and I was pregnant yeah. with my second and she was like a little under a year and a half. And um, I guess the only point of that, it was like desperate times. Cause she'd never, I'd never just handed her a sucker, you know, she right. was one. So she'd, she'd never really had, she, I guess she'd had a little birthday cake, but that was probably the only treat that she'd have. And she had to get two flu shots. We all did. I was pregnant. It was like, a, it was a pretty big health scare, yeah. public health yep. scare at the time. And like, they were short on the vaccine. So I had to get on this waiting list and it was, it, it kind of was a big deal at the time. And so she and I went to this clinic and she had to get not one, but two. And she was just old enough where I think all her baby shots were done, but they're old enough to start to like a little bit understand what's going on. So it was super traumatic. And actually it's funny. She's turning 10, but she's still terrified of needles. Like she, she's yeah, really Claire bad with too. shots. Um, and so that was where it was like, this is an excellent opportunity to introduce you to the wonder of lollipops. Like, yeah. <laughs> and she did, you know, like she got her yeah. shot, then she got a lollipop and she was so happy. And, and then with the second and third kid, I feel like they get one at every doc. Our, our well, pediatrician still gave lollipops. I don't, yeah. I don't think they do. Ours doesn't now, but all when my kids were really tiny, it was just, I'm hard. sure my first, like giving my kid, my baby candy experience probably looked a lot like, like desperation. Yes. Um, cause again, it's not something I would have intentionally done or like, right. Uh, like mindfully set out to do, <laughs> but it's the kind of thing like fate thrusts upon you a situation in which candy is 
is really the only out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure I've got a bunch of those. I just don't really remember them. Yeah, that's really funny. Um, okay, do we have anything else to say about desserts? Do you have like a fate? I know you're not a big sweets person, but do you have a like if you were out to any kind of dinner or like could have any kind of sweet treat, anything, what would it be? Well, that's really hard to say because I do actually like several sweets. So my favorite, I would say if I was out at a restaurant that had pie, I love a good lemon meringue pie. Oh, interesting. Love it. Love it. Love it. But my, probably my absolute favorite is brownies. Yeah. I love a good fudgy brownie. brownie. No Mm. nuts though. Right. Do you like, no, 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 no nuts. Yeah. I love a chocolate chips. You're okay. Or like fudge chunks. I like, like, like that experience, but same. actually brownie batter is probably the best thing on earth. Oh, I think it's better than brownies. I see. I feel that way about regular cake batter. Like regular mm. cake from a box batter is really good for me. Mm-hmm. And cookie dough. Um, how about you? <laughs> how about you? How about, you know, I love, if I'm out to dinner, like something I couldn't really make myself very well, I love a good apple pie, actually. Like apple pie mm. with ice cream is one of my favorites. I am mm-hmm. not not a lemon person. So I really don't like lemon desserts, mm. lemon pies, or lemon pound cakes. I generally fall in the chocolate caramel Chocolate what about a good, what about a really good chocolate tort or like a chocolate mm-hmm. mousse? Something that's like a little I, less sweet and yeah. a little more and I don't I, know, complicated or complex. Tasting. I love a mousse consistency. Like I love yes. eating something that feels like fancy pudding. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a mousse, like a mousse parfait on the menu in the hospital where I delivered my babies, which was actually a really nice hospital. And it was there the first two times. And so I looked forward to it as like something I could eat. And I had C-section. So I had to wait like two days before eating. And the third time when I went and had Violet, it wasn't on the menu anymore. And I was so sad. Wasn't, I mean, it was hospital food, but it was right. really, really a good chocolate mousse parfait. Like where there's whipped cream and then the mousse layered. That's delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Um, gosh, I don't know if we have anything else. Like, I don't, I, I don't feel like we can probably offer tips on. <laughs> we didn't managing. offer a single tip this entire time. I think we did. We had snack <laughs> we? tips. We had I guess you're right. You're right. Yep. Sweets tips are hard because you just have to decide. We'll, we'll leave it here. You have to decide what kind of sugar battles are worth fighting. And I, I think, I think I do. I definitely have some sugar standards, things that I don't buy. You talked about not keeping s- stuff in your house. Yeah. Um, and you just, it's a, just a process of figuring out like what, what's, what feels right to you to feel like you can sleep yeah. at night, but your kids can also enjoy life and birthday parties and sweets. And yeah. one thing I have found is it goes in big swings. We fall way off the sugar wagon and then we, then we course correct and kind of go back the other direction. And then I relax a little. And so, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's just like anything else in parenting, right? You have your, your values around something and those are yours and they're totally fine and they have nothing to do with anybody else. <laughs> so it's like the first, you know what I mean? Like they don't yeah. have anything to do with what anybody else does. It's you. And then you just kind of have to find a way to like set standards around that while, while still realizing that life happens. And yeah, yeah, everything comes back. There's always coming back. Like you can fall off the wagon and get back on. I agree. Uh, Over and over. I will say, I think in terms of like food culture in our country, I think we're at a better place with understanding sugar. And I'm sure we have listeners out there who are much more well-read than you and I on kind of the dangers of too much sugar. So I think it's probably a good time to be, I feel like there are snacks and options. I would much rather have like a whole dessert, like a bowl of ice cream or make homemade chocolate chip cookies, yeah. then deal with the sugar that's packed into like most packaged snacks to go back to the snacks discussion. But I feel right. like as a culture, there's some awareness about that now. And that's a good thing because a lot of the, the sugar you hear about, it's not, we're not talking about occasional desserts. We're talking about the sugar that's put in everything has sugar to everything else. Yes. So yep. if I were going to, if I were going to get stricter, I might almost err on that side of things than I would about limiting desserts. Does that make well, sense? and, and yeah. And I will also say, you know, if with my experiment with eating keto, which doesn't really allow for sugar too uh-huh. much, um, I just got used to reading labels and I was amazed, yeah. amazed at how much sugar is in salty everything. Things. Yeah. Salty things. Yes. Because it's it, because the food scientists that are creating it are trying to come up with this perfect salty, sweet combo that yep. just keeps you wanting more. It's like yep. your, your taste buds are like, Oh my gosh, what salty or sweet. I don't know. I want both. And like you just, and, and the fat, you add the fat yep. in. So the three things go together. And I, so it's not, it's not dessert. That's a problem. It's not snacks. It's a problem. It's just like the way. Yeah. Yeah. The way kind of processed foods in particular. Yeah. 
um, set us up to fail, sort of. Yeah, Sucks. but I guess if there's a, if there's an <laughs> upside to that, I feel like we're at a good place in in our knowledge of that. Whereas yeah. like ten years ago, I I don't think there was as much awareness. Right. Um, no, so, I agree. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll end on a little. We'll end there's on a, a higher tip. note than me going. Ugh, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> Um, okay, well, we would love to hear from you guys and how you handle sweets and snacks in your house. You can email us, hello, at themomhour.com, or just hit us up anywhere you find us on social media. And as soon as we're done here, you will hear me and my 10-year-old, my new 10-year-old, Allegra, talking about snacks and sweets in our house and other stuff. Fun. We'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, guys, it's Sarah, and I'm back here with my daughter, Allegra. Hi, Allegra. Hi. So Allegra, Megan and I talked about snacks and desserts in this episode. And so I thought you might be able to give the kid perspective on how this works in our house. So I have a few questions for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So if one of your friends asked you or if somebody else asked you, what are the rules about snacks in your house? How would you explain that to them? What do you think the rules are in our house? Well, you can have one bread fruit, <laughs> bread food group per meal. And then you could have unlimited fruits and vegetables and. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I kind of forgot about the bread food group. That's usually what I tell you guys when so that you're not saying for my snack, I'd like crackers and chips and toast and a bagel. So then I usually say just pick one from the bread food group. Yeah. Um, OK, so what snacks do you wish I bought that I don't buy? Potato chips. Doritos and fruit snacks. Yeah, actually, we talked about in the episode how I don't buy fruit snacks. Those are kind of kind of a treat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. so do you think dad and I are more strict about snacks and dessert than most of your friends' parents? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Is there any way in which we're less strict, like any way that we're more laid back? No. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Okay. so if you could eat as much desserts and sweets as you wanted without limits, what do you think that would be like? Like, what? How much would you really eat in a single day? Would you all of it? All of it? Yeah. Would all you? Of it. Would you like make yourself sick? Do you yeah. think there'd be a point at which you'd say, "I cannot eat another Sour Patch Kid"? Mm, possibly. But it would take a lot. It would take a while. And what kind of sweets would you totally binge on first? Sour fruity. Yeah, she's snacks. like a she's like a Sour Patch Kid type. I'm a maybe chocolate some and- chocolate caramel, but. Mostly sour fruity. Okay. Okay. So a lot of our listeners have really little babies and toddlers. So uh, what would you say to those moms who think that they're never going to let their kids have fruit snacks and Sour Patch Kids and all that? They're not going to be able to keep the promise to themselves. (laughs) They're going to break down at some point. I told the story about your first lollipop. Do you know when it was? No. You had a flu shot. Oh, (laughs) So it was a good use of a lollipop. Good use of a lollipop. Okay, well, Allegra, tomorrow you have a big day. What's tomorrow? My birthday! Allegra's turning 10 tomorrow, so everybody wishes you happy birthday. By the time this comes out, you'll already be 10. Maybe like a foot taller. All right, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. Megan here. Sarah and I would absolutely love it if you would hit pause right now, like right where you're listening, and leave the Mom Hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, this is one of the biggest ways you can thank us, and it really only takes about 30 seconds. If you're listening to Apple Podcasts, you can navigate to the Mom Hour's show listing. So when you're in the episode you're listening to right now, click where it says the Mom Hour just above the play button and then scroll all the way to the bottom and you will see the ratings and reviews. We would love if you would leave us one as well. Thank you so much for listening. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code THEMOMHOUR at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.